Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Go Sweden. Today it's time to do a voiceover in the beginning because in the video that you can see right now I was recording with my phone and also as you can maybe see based on the length of my hair this video is a bit longer ago also the sun is shining I'm there with t-shirt well the video was recorded in the beginning of September and instead of just giving you a bad audio quality with my phone I decided to do this overview and then we're gonna start into the video so what can you see here well I was actually on a Friday evening after work at this lake called Lumschön. You can see that I am yeah, talking, <laughs> that I'm pointing a bit around, like show you the area and all the other things that you can see at this lake. And this is more like an introduction to give you an overview of the plans that I had on that weekend. Well, it was supposed to be the last nice weekend in Sweden and I decided to go camping with my car. At the beginning I decided to go a bit further like to Storuman. In the end I have decided to go to Dorothea and decided to camp in the area but I don't want to spoil too much so what I have done basically is going from spot to spot and just see what's going on in those locations in Sweden. So enough talking here from my voiceover. Let's join into this adventure that I had around six weeks ago. Okay guys, I have reached the first spot of my trip. It was actually not even planned, but just full out of surprise, I ended up here. I have reached a lost place, a lost airfield in the middle of Sweden. You have probably already seen this airfield in a video where I was doing a reverse check on the Tesla. How fast can you go in reverse with a Tesla? Because I was just curious to do so and I will definitely also include this airfield in my 10,000 kilometer video that I will make about this car. I was thinking like, okay, there's probably someone like, or something blocking the entrance to this airfield that you are not allowed to be here. Maybe I am still not allowed to be here and there are cameras actually recording me. But I have already driven once over the airfield, like with 170 or whatsoever. And I, it felt so weird. It felt so incredibly weird to be here. It is really, really crazy. So I will now produce the videos that I just mentioned. And then we will see each other back in, I don't know, the next real spot that I was planning to go to. Okay, next stop, something random, which I actually still don't know what it is. I'm currently on the way to this place, but you can see I'm standing on some kind of bridge to some kind of, well, water area. So there the water is coming from and there you have actually a nice lake. But this is not where I'm going to. So the lake is not the highlight here. There's actually something supposed to be there, like 200 meters from here. And as always, when I'm driving, I'm just looking basically on the map to see what is highlighted here. And oh, look, we have already spotted something, some ghosts. Maybe this is the, the spooky little ghost place that you should not stay at because then the night witches will be coming and haunting you if you stay here. <laughs> no, hopefully not. But oh, it's very, very unstable wood here. I have seen on the Google Maps picture in the car that there is some rock formation. I don't know how, if it's in the end just some something like, okay, good to see, but not special. There's really some balancing needed here. A lot of spider webs. Oh, look. Du, du, du. The biggest enemy in the forest next to some blueberries right here. The most delicious mushroom on the planet. Well, not everything in the forest is here to treat you well. Not only the ghost, but also mushrooms. That's why I don't like mushrooms. I don't like the consistency. That's actually the worst thing that I always struggle with. And then the flavor is just not, nothing, nothing good for me. Okay, if we are going really, really crazy on those wooden planks again, broken planks but where is where is the thing we are aiming for there you can see the nice little lake and right back there we're coming from you can see there's a camper 
there's a German woman there. There's also another car parked where people are having some food, grilling there, barbecuing, however you want to call it. But we are not here to stay. Let's go back to track. But I think we are close because there is a sign. Aventures banan prukas po en risk. Rød svorabana, blå letterabana. Oh, wow. I don't know, I hope you see it on the camera. Because they have really like a path to climb up. And you also have a ladder. But we're getting off track again. So we have to go this way. Ugh. So many ways. But only one is the right this time, I guess. Now I found the spot that I was aiming for. And I really think it looks cool. May I present to you a natural house? <laughs> that is crazy. Whoa, that's also scary at the same time. And now here we have some story telling us that elves were here. And whoa, holy moly. Just imagine this thing falling down. I really don't want to stand under there. I don't feel comfortable, especially with this one. But this is already scary enough. <laughs> and it's probably going to be really loud when this thing drops. <sighs> yeah, but there we have it. The Vita Huset, I think it's called. Well, well. With that said, I think there's one last thing I'm going to show you here. And then I'm going to the next thing. I also believe that this building here is a toilet. I don't want to double check, but I'm pretty sure it is. But up there is also a nice little place for people to chill, to, to have some picnic. And that is just awesome, guys. This is really awesome. And basically, I could do this my whole life, just randomly driving around Sweden, basically taking every, every path you can find to see what's there, what type of history is there. What do we have here? Tilke du også at Vita Huset er en fantastisk plads og gjerne vil at skal fortsette at underholde. Så hvis du liker denne plads, du kan scanne denne QR-kode og swish money basically to the people who take care of it. And also keep this bathing place alive, because this bathing place here is actually also pretty cool. So, you have some fireplace here. You have the picnic table, another bench, oh. and there you have, well, the opportunity to take a swim. However, I have to say, this lake really does not look that welcoming. What do you guys think? You like it here? Would you stay here? Would you say this is worth taking a few minutes, hours of your yeah, free time, just taking in the nature? The tables here, well, they are older, especially this little chair there. <laughs> Check out the chair. Like, I don't know how long, how many years this one is here, but this is also really, really old school. <laughs> and there are so many spider webs everywhere. I just take them all with me. Now, I've been here enough. I will see you most likely at the supercharger. Sometimes in the middle of nowhere in Sweden, you find the weirdest things. Why in the world is there a picture of a woman? <laughs> it is art, to be honest. Like, it is also on signs that says here there is um, some piece of art. So if you are closer, you can also see like this is only holes, basically in a piece of metal that creates the illusion of a woman. But still, like that's, that's like one of the other things. Either you go through Sweden and discover a lot of cool nature spots, or you go through the middle of Sweden and you discover random pieces of art that are just placed here in the middle of nowhere. Like it's not that I'm complaining about it, I love it. It's just weird in a certain way, but also cool in the other way, because this makes those long trips through the forests kind of interesting to just stop by. So was it worth stopping here? Yes, of course, two minutes. It's directly next to the road I'm going through, so that's fine.
Okay guys, I have arrived at the supercharger. It is most likely the smallest supercharger I have seen so far. You only have four charging spots right here. And I am currently in Dorothea. So I really don't know what's in this small little town. I will just walk to the closest lake that I have seen while passing by. And when I'm there, I will tell you what my goal for today is and then we will see where we will be going, so. Okay guys, as you can see, I am at this lake now in Dorothea and I was not expecting that you can go in the lake right here, if you see it, because I am actually planning to go to a different lake. But should I try this one instead? Because here I can at least take a swim. It's very, yeah, it's empty. There is nothing here, so I can put my stuff here. The question is, however, where do I park my car? I think I will continue driving. I have seen the little, cute little city. You can also see that in winter, probably you can go skiing there. Small little place, it always feels super empty. And even on weekends like now, where are all the people? Because people definitely live here. It's just bad. And I also have read on the sign, I think you cannot see it, it's behind the trees. It says Southern Lapland. So I have basically touched Lapland today. I was not even thinking about that. But I also saw that the signs were now already bilingual, so in Swedish and then in the language of the Sami. So now I think I will be going back to the car and let's see how much I have charged. Actually, I just have realized that Tesla is planning to build more superchargers here. Or maybe they were planning and then they got basically rid of them because they said it's not needed, the demand is not high enough. But you can see there are two and there are another, so four more additional chargers, just the way like they are set up right there. We will see in the future if we have more here or not. Okay guys, I have reached the camp spot. As you can already see behind me, you have some wardrobe areas, so where you can change your clothes. And there it is, the little bathing place. No sand this time, but it's also nice because when you always have sand, you always have sand everywhere in the car, in your apartment, in house, whatever. And here you don't have so much sand, so that is good. And it is really, really like a cozy little spot. Now actually, um, I don't know if it's a butterfly or a moth has just landed on me. Hey, it probably peed on me or something like this. It was kind of wet. <laughs> it's time to take a swim in this little thing. And then I might even eat my dinner here. I don't really have a plan, like it's not that far from home. I could definitely drive home today, but because I took everything with me to camp, I will also camp, but it might only be like an hour away from home. We will see, but yeah. So now let's just have a cozy evening here and then I will drive to a nice spot to sleep. But there's actually a boat coming right now, so maybe because I actually see that there is another car here, but no one is in there and no one is here, so maybe it's them of the boat. Okay guys, as you can see, I was in the water. Actually, I wanted to make a video where I go in the water and go out again. But because the people on the boat actually were the people with the car there, I didn't feel like filming the whole time. But now, yeah, I will put you on the, on the tripod and then I will take another little swim again. And then I will put some clothes on and probably make my dinner here. I think that's a good spot. Like, unfortunately, there are also some kind of uneven rocks here. It's not like it's super smooth. So, uh, and I hate, I hate when you don't have a smooth water experience in the water, especially also when it's cold. But yeah, I, I'm used to the temperature now, so it's not the scary part again. The only question I always ask myself is, I wish I had a thermometer with me because I really don't know what, how cold it is. Okay, now I have totally destroyed my walking path, the view of my walking path. But there we go. Oh, pain. Uh, oh. oh, man, thank God. I made it to at least some grass. Oh, oh. But isn't it? peaceful it's so quiet so i will now make some food i'm 
actually pretty lazy. I was thinking if I buy some tomato sauce and things the same way as I have done during my Norway trip. But no, I just make some cup noodles. So this video is sponsored by cup noodles. No, it's actually not, but I was kind of like feeling them again. I have eaten a lot of these things during my study time when I was observing in the observatory during the nights. I just bought them. I wasn't even planning to buy them for this. I was more just thinking like if something is going on during work and I'm lazy, I have something. But now, yeah, it's going to be for this one. So let's see how we're going to do this. Of course, I have to cook some water in this case instead of boiling like tomato sauce or whatsoever. Ah, I forgot my my real um, knife and spoon, but I think it's going to be fine to just use the stuff that I have in my small little camping equipment. And I actually want to talk about something during the time I'm cooking right now when I have the water on, because, you know, like I'm sitting at this nice little lake here and I really, really enjoy being here. But one thing is missing though. And it's really like the only thing that is missing in my life right now to say that I would be fully happy. And well, that is someone that gives me the opportunity to share my adventures, my experiences with right here, right now. Like, of course, I'm sharing this with you guys and you really helped me to feel not lonely in situations like that because it's not like that I would be uh, like lonely right now if the camera would be off. I would also keep enjoying that but on the same side it would be nice to have someone physically, physically available here. So basically a girlfriend and a future wife that I really really look forward to meet in the future that makes this whole experience fully completed. But as of right now, well, it's unfortunately not going so well. I will talk to you when I have the water on because I have to kind of concentrate now. <laughs> but you will, you will see. Okay, so let's make some fire action here. There we go. Action. Okay. And because we just need the water, we make that. And now we are ready to talk a bit until the water is cooking okay so guys the problem that I really struggle with is meeting people in this town or in Ernstadt's week and in northern Sweden it's not like that I am the most social person as you probably have already noticed like just to give you an example if there would be people coming right now right here I probably would of course finish my food but if I wouldn't have brought all the stuff yet and I was just getting ready after my swim to go to the car and pick everything up I probably would have left when people came. I have seen a lot of stuff on Instagram where it says like I am very introvert when I'm around strangers but the moment I hang out with friends and people that I trust that I yeah have already a good bonding with then I become the most extrovert person ever that doesn't give a damn about anything like I can talk about everything without feeling awkward or whatsoever but to get to this point it takes some time and usually you know like it happens naturally that for example during university you are in courses you talk to the people sitting next to you of course you kind of have to force yourself to not only to keep up during the lectures to, with homeworks but also to just like not be lonely but it was also one of the points why I moved in a shared apartment during my studies because I knew if I live in a single apartment alone I will have more difficulties in the beginning to find people and now of course I am living alone but I have work colleagues I see them every day besides the weekend and this really helps me of course and we are also now doing things every week or like every second week. Like this week again, we had a board game night on Wednesday. The thing, however, is that some of the people 
of course, are also busy. They have lives. They already have established a life here in Sweden. And another person that I know from work, he is also very introvert and he doesn't have such a high social battery as I do. So like he really also needs a lot of time alone. So like I would probably hang out more with him, but because he also like not invites me so much, I don't want to force myself onto him. Now we basically come to the point again with the girlfriend situation. So I'm using online apps. Like it's not a secret, like because in Sweden there are only two options basically to meet people, especially in the north. Either you go to parties where you most likely get drunk and then you meet someone or you go on a dating app. And I don't drink alcohol. That is a problem basically. Like it's not a problem for me. Like I really love the way that I'm not drinking. But at the same time, it limits myself to like awkward situations because you just feel always kind of like the outsider when you go to a party and you don't drink. And at the same time, like on apps, especially in the area, on Tinder, for example, 80% of all the women I see there have at least one picture where they have some kind of alcohol in their hand if it's like a beer a bo like some kind of bottle or a glass of wine and that's not my spirit like people who really hype up alcohol that's like the problem with that is i have learned from my last relationship that i am not able to accept that they are drinking like i always want to kind of make them better make them healthier and that's a problem i know that so the best way to avoid this is to basically find someone who also doesn't drink alcohol however now if you take away 80 percent of all the people on tinder you have 20 percent left and then of course on these 20 percent first of all i have to decide who might fit like like we always say like it should be about the inner values not about how someone looks and of course it's true but at the same time the first thing you notice of a person is how they look, how they act, how they smile. And if that is not working, then the characteristic of that person, like the, the, the inner values, could be as great as possible, but still you have this downer in the beginning. So we have the 20%, we get rid of basically, let's say 15%, then we have 5% that I like on Tinder, for example. And of course, from that 5%, let's say 95% of them don't like me back. So how much percent do we have left? Zero point something. And that is the point. And then when you have a match with someone, you have another problem. First of all, they probably are from Sweden. So you talk Swedish with them. And because my Swedish is not so good, I kind of try to talk Swedish but I don't want to make it awkward so I kind of Google translate stuff and at the same time I also don't want to just start English because I feel like okay they might be not interested in me when I'm not Swedish and or whatsoever it just makes everything very very difficult and I really don't know where this all is going to so like I don't see a realistic chance for me to find someone in real life randomly just on the street if i meet someone randomly it would be like a situation right now like i'm talking with you guys and then someone pops up like camping like a woman alone and we just start to talk and kind of connect which would be really cool of course but i don't think that is possible ah it's hot ah, 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 ah. the other thing of course is also that when you match with someone on tinder most of the time those women have so many matches that you're just one out of many and you have to be the special one to catch their attention i don't know how high the percentage is of like having this success like i think in my total life during my dating online dating thing i had like four or five people that i really had a running conversation with like with only one person it really worked out as a relationship that was my last relationship but all the other ones well most of them i'm actually still in contact with we're friends some of them yeah well the friendship is kind of like slowing out or like disappearing but still when you have someone you have a conversation with and they're really interested in you 
then it's mostly at least a nice experience and it makes things easier. But that's also very, very rare when I have a match. Yeah, so that is my current situation. And would it be nice to have like, like a girlfriend here sitting where both enjoying the sunset on the lake? Right there, you have the sun setting nearly in the lake with the few little trees in front. It would be great to have someone to share it with. And the other question, of course, is also, would I still make YouTube videos when I have that person? Because the other person, of course, also should feel comfortable with me doing that. Like, I don't want to hide having the person around, but at the same time, I also don't want her to be like in focus all the time. It should just feel natural. And it's so many things that make this so impossible right now. So it's not like that I'm thinking about this all the time. It just felt like it's the right moment right now to talk about this when I'm sitting here waiting for my water to boil. But okay, so that is the life I am having right now. And now the water is yep ready. So it's time to get it in my ramen. Oh, wrong direction. Whoops. I haven't done that in a, such a long time that I really don't know how this is working. What time is it actually? Did I get a call from my father, for example? I don't know. Oh yeah, I actually did. <laughs> so I will talk to my dad and then we probably see each other at the camp spot. Okay guys, I have found my camp spot. This is just a short little video for the rest of the day. Tomorrow morning I will show you more, but this is most likely the beautiful, like the most beautiful camp spot I have found so far. But I'm also taking a bit of a risk because I don't know if you can see it. There are like a lot of campfire spots here. So this has definitely been used more than the spots that I'm usually parking at. And there's also like a road right there where cars can just come by. I am kind of off center, so not really visible. But if people are coming, like it's, it's more likely here that more people will join during the night. But still, I think it's worth the risk. You can also just check out the view. Tomorrow morning, I will definitely show a bit more. I will also take my drone out if no one else came. Like, I of course don't want to bother anyone flying around here, but it is definitely a very, very nice camp spot for sure. Um, yeah, I would also park here, but I'm just, well, I'm scared, you know, like I don't want anyone to push me in the, in the lake when I'm sleeping. This is uh, a kind of ugly thought. So yeah, <laughs> so this is the camp spot for tonight. I'm now preparing everything and then I'm going to sleep pretty soon because the sun is setting earlier, like it's already set now. So I think I will go probably to bed around nine, then I will be on my phone for a bit. And then, yeah, that's it. So see you tomorrow morning. Good morning world. It is Sunday morning now. And as you can see, the fog took over the lake you can basically see nothing, unfortunately. I was thinking about like taking my drone out, but is it really worth taking the drone out when you cannot see the beauty of the lake? I really don't know, but you can see the sun <laughs> trying to go through here. This is actually really a nice area that I found yesterday. As I can also tell you, no one came by yesterday evening or whatsoever. However, one thing actually came, came by yesterday. <laughs> when I was brushing my teeth, out of a sudden, like a deer was coming by with those big thingies on the top. I don't know what they are called in English. I was like standing right here, brushing my teeth and out of a sudden I hear like boo, 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 boo. and I'm turning around to the street. I also have the Tesla footage because the car was of course recording so I could use that footage to show you and you can also see my reaction when I realized that there's just a wild animal passing by because of course I was like do I have to make a noise is it going towards me whatsoever but it was just crossing this this street here I really wonder what has been here in the past why there is this way because why should there be a way? And it's also a real road. Like, and also if you look right there, the road is more than just gravel. This is a real road. Something has been here, which I just don't know of. And I always am curious about things like these. 
but it was a nice spot. I think I will actually mark it down just, just to have this one in the future. Because I also think you can actually take a swim here. Like, of course, not today because it's just... Ugh. It's not a quiet lake like the one I have been in yesterday. Yeah, and also on the other side there, if you go back here, you can see that you can, yeah, basically you have like a small little bay area and then the land goes over there. And also same thing on the other side. I will go home and that is then also basically the end of this trip. I have to say, I was really, really happy that I made the decision to go camping, especially the morning hours right now are always so amazing for me. Like this getting up, you have this kind of like chill temperatures outside and it's like, like this fog. It makes, I don't know, like this camping experience really great. I don't know why, but I, I love this. I love waking up with this. And you kind of just feel so different than waking up in your cozy bed at home because you don't experience the nature usually like after right after getting out of the bed but here you do and that's why I love camping but enough said guys I hope that you have a wonderful day and we're going to see each other back in the next video have a good one bye bye mm -hmm.